well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever it is that you're watching this. My name's Mark Smith, I'm the Curate at Holy Trinity, and I'm leading us through our thoughts for the day this week. We're looking at Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians. Do have a look at the last three videos to see where we've come so far. But today we're looking at verses 7 to 10 of chapter 1. Let me read them for us and then I'll pray. And so you became a model to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. The Lord's message rang out from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia. Your faith in God has become known everywhere. Therefore, we don't need to say anything about it, for they themselves report what kind of reception you gave us. They tell how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the coming wrath. Let's pray. Father God, would you make the book live to us today? Would you show us yourself within your word? Would you show us ourselves and show us our saviour and make the book live, O Lord? Amen. Well, we've been learning lots from this church in Thessalonica so far this week. And the reason we can learn from them is there in verse 7. This church is something of a model church. It was a model back then to other churches around and it's still a model, model today for us. See, this is one of Paul's most encouraging letters. And because this was a church that was doing well, it can give us a bit of a spiritual health check or MOT. We've been given a six month extension our MOTs for our vehicles, haven't we? But it's still important to see how we measure up, how we're doing spiritually in regard to our faith. In fact, perhaps this lockdown is a chance to give that some real attention. But the thing I want us to particularly notice today is found in the first seven words of verse eight. The Lord's message rang out from you. We look so far at the way the Thessalonians received the message, the change that it brought about in them. But we see here that the message didn't stop with them. The Lord's message rang out from them. I think the image is that of a bell. And whenever this bell sounds, whenever it's hit, it rings out with the good news about Jesus. The message rang out in Macedonia, which was the region Thessalonica was in, but also in Achaia, which was further south towards Athens. That was Paul's first hint this church was doing well. Almost everyone in Greece knew what had happened. They knew something dramatic had happened in Thessalonica. And look at what they knew, verse 9. They tell how you turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the coming wrath. Now we'll be looking at all that in more detail tomorrow, but I just want us to notice how much onlookers knew. Because do you think they worked out all of that just from observing? Surely not. It wasn't just that the Thessalonians shopped and worked and parented in transformed ways. No, it was from their words. They spoke about Jesus whenever they could. The message rang out. Uh, they just couldn't shut up about him. Every chance they got, have you heard about Jesus? You know he rose from the dead. You know he's coming back. And that is what someone does, Paul says, when they're true believers when they're the real thing, the genuine article. They want to talk to other people about Jesus. They're like a bell that only sounds one note. Well, I wonder, what is it that rings out of us when we're hit? Or if someone asked our friends or neighbours what it is we believe, what do you think they'd say? Do they know we're Christians? If so, would they be able to give as accurate a description as verses 9 to 10? I don't think mine would. Perhaps that's something to think about and pray about. Week today, we'll be starting a Christianity Explored course. Who might you invite along to that? Why not take a moment to pray for someone and then to drop them a text? I used to run a group at a church I used to work at called 118. There was a little play on the 118 phone number and some popular TV adverts with 118 runners at the time. Perhaps you remember it. But the real reason for the name was this verse, 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 8, 1, 1, 8. Because wouldn't it be great 
if we were 118 people? And if Holy Trinity Frogmore was a 118 church, wouldn't that be brilliant? That's surely something to pray for. Well, let me lead us in a prayer now. Father, forgive us that we're often slow to share our faith, that there's often no clapper to our bell. Please change us. Please excite us with the gospel. And would your message ring out from us like it rang out from the Thessalonians? We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thanks for listening. Do tune in tomorrow as we finish chapter one of 1 Thessalonians. And do look out at the end of this video for a link to a song, which I think may help us to respond to what we've been thinking about today. You should find it up here.